finally heading out of town Tuesday April 23rd I think it's the 23rd I know it's Tuesday and my turkey hunt starts tomorrow week two of the turkey hunt so I'm heading up by my brother-in-law Craig I've got to um, get my blind set up pull the trail cam see what's been moving around and uh, we start uh, hunting the turkeys tomorrow morning so they're all checking us out because we came to a complete stop here get spooked they all get spooked there they go only about five of them running just got off the phone with Kevin Pitzel I'd asked him about in the food plot on his trail cams he said that he had some turkeys and I was curious but he said something interesting he said some of the pictures showed him like flying up or flying down that they may be roosting around the food plot so I'm pretty jazzed about that. You can see anything in here. Oh, this is flooded pretty bad all over here. There. Now well, we're here. Well, what the well-dressed turkey hunter wears in Craigswoods, hip waders. I can see the water from here. We need hip waders to get back on the high ground. Well, we made it through the water. Now I gotta drag this all the way to the turkey blind. I ain't got a lot of time, but I'm looking for some turkey sign. It looked like there were some scratchings on the trail. Oh yeah, 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 right here, right here, right here. We got turkey scratchings right here. And there's our blind. My problem is I can't spend a lot of time looking here. So we're just going to fan out and look around real quick. Oh yeah. I see sign in here. Yep. You can see right here a little bit, a little bit here. Coming through here a little bit. Not real pronounced though, real subtle. Let's go out a, let's go out a little bit further and see what we can see. Out in here. This looks like it too right here, scratching back. This all looks like it's tore up all in here. But not real pronounced, just subtle. You can see in here a little bit. And there's our blind again. So they've been in here, rooting around, looking for, yeah, here's a pronounced one too right here. You can see them, they're scratching in here that way. All right, well, that's good news and let's get the blinds set up. Seven o'clock, we got it as good as it's gonna be. Oh. There's the blind from back here. It blends in well. I've got no time to put any greenery around it. We're under the crunch here. At seven o'clock, birds are gonna start flying up if they fly up, so I'm gonna get in there and sit and just listen. All right, you can see the sun's right at treetop level. In that tree. We just ran out of time. We're gonna deal with what we got for camel. My only problem is here in this corner. See that camel's kind of white and I don't like that. Last year I was able to get some of the greenery from around here, trim it, put it in there to hide that. Because if you look, there you can see the green yet. So I could use some of that, but I'm just, I'm out of time. Kevin had said on the food plot to the west of us, he's got some pictures of the birds in the air, either landing, taking off, to fly up. Um, they may, might be roosting around the food plot. If I hear something, then I got a real conundrum. How do I sneak out of here quiet? Well, 
<clears throat> even though it looks like I got enough light, the sun is now starting to drop below the tree line. We didn't hear anything out but here. We're out of time tonight. We gotta head back. So yeah, here's another other turkey scratching right here. You can see going back this way. So this is uh this is tore up pretty good right in here. You must have had a flock of birds in here. Even out there I can see it tore up a little bit. So hopefully we'll get some action tomorrow. Time to drag drag the sled back. It's kind of a conundrum there for me is if I sit out here later and I do hear a bird fly up in the area, I'm dragging that sled making a lot of noise. It spooked the bird out. Um, I think we just head out now, get through the water, get back, and uh, get out here tomorrow and see what happens. I pulled the two trail cams here by my turkey blind. We're going to take a look at those tonight and see what's been moving. Well, the first thing I did getting back to the trailer was download my SD card info from my trail cams at the turkey blind. Then I checked to see if Kevin Pitzel was able to email me all of his trail cam photos from the food plot area. Now having all that intel, now it was time to sit down and review those pics. That, coupled with the boots on the ground MRI from today, most recent information, this will allow me to put a plan together to start my spring turkey hunt in the second time period here in Wisconsin tomorrow morning. I was confused by the trail cam intel that was available from my turkey blind area cameras. The camera set up on the trail coming into the blind area did pick up pics of deer from 415 through 420. But after that, the only pics were of Kevin moving in the area and me shooting video of the current turkey sign on the ground and me setting up the blind. Meanwhile, Kevin's trail cam pics from the food plot area showed Tom's, Jake's, hens, combinations of all of them, and flocks of birds moving through the food plot area in recent days. Well, I was still at a loss for the discrepancy in the intel between the trail cam photos and the MRI. A week and a half ago when I left, I had that same discrepancy and I still haven't figured it out. And now I'm on the eve of my turkey hunt and I gotta come up with a solution. Well, I was hungry and tired from my long day, but I still had to come up with a plan for my turkey hunt tomorrow morning. In the end, I decided to use the two overriding factors. Number one, the MRI at the turkey blind, all the current scratchings, and number two, the trail cam photos from the food plot area showing that turkeys were moving recently in the area. I still couldn't explain the lack of the trail cam intel at the turkey blind area, but based on those two overriding factors I made the decision my turkey hunt would start right here on Craig's land tomorrow morning. All right, it's five to eight, late start this morning. Um, <laughs> nothing went right yesterday, this morning. Um, top of things off, my waders, my hip waders have got holes in them. I came back with wet socks, which was a plus that that didn't happen this morning going out. So um, to make matters worse, I was dead tired last night, fell asleep. Got up at 3 in the morning, finished what I had to do, ate breakfast, washed up, did everything that needed to be done late last night. And it's 8 o'clock already and I'm getting out here. And now because I don't have my hip waders, I'm going to try to find a way off the main trail through the swamp area where the water's not as deep. So uh, we got through the lowland. It's not as deep if you come through um, right behind the trailer and come out through the swamp area. So you can see the pine groves over here. So our food plot is right out there. I can see it right there. 
So we're going to come out on the food plot and move ahead to our turkey blind. Well, we got in this morning, we finished it off. Like I said, not a good start to opening day. It's after 8 o'clock and we're first getting in the blind. There. Alright, we're going to get settled in. Wait a good half hour, 45 minutes, let the woods quiet down and start doing some calls, see what happens. I want to get a couple of hen decoys set up out there. Sit and wait. We've been calling about every 20 minutes to a half hour. Well, it's a little after 11 o'clock, but we got that late start this morning. So I think we're going to hunt till like 1. The latest I took a bird I think was like 11.30, 11.45, but the woods are deader than a doornail. No squirrels, no birds flying around. Just completely quiet and still. Good napping. Well, I made it till 12 o'clock. <laughs> Last granola bar. I'm going to try to stay out here as long as I can this afternoon. So I'm thinking we'll hunt today late as late as I can this afternoon. Uh, tomorrow probably won't hunt if it's raining hard. And Friday I'll try public hunting. Unless I still get a bird today. It's about five after one. Um, we're doing good. I'm probably going to hunt till four. You know, it kind of reminds me of musky fishing. you got to have that same attitude. When you musky fish, you got to have the attitude that every cast, this is going to be the cast that I get this musky. And here, turkey hunting sometimes, every call, this is the call that's going to bring in that bird. And so far the only thing moving in the woods is basically me. Heading back for some well-deserved supper. I survived today on two granola bars and a bottle of water. <laughs> Did not see or hear any turkeys at all. Didn't see any deer. Pretty quiet day in the woods. Put in a hard eight hours. It's uh, five o'clock. Day one is done. Um, just not a good start for my hunt. I'm just frustrated. My hip waders are leaking. Found that out coming back last night. My whole right leg was soaking wet. Then I found another way out this morning going through the swamp area. Stayed off the trail going out the main trail. Kind of went right through the heart of it, the swamp, the bedding area which I don't like doing. I want to stay out of there. That's like the deer sanctuary. But I had no choice this morning. If I wanted to hunt out here, I had to do it. So I got through with my swampers. We settled in around 8 o'clock. And within 20, 30 minutes, I heard uh, three shotgun blasts out west. Figured somebody harvested a bird or two. And um, that was about it. I checked the AccuWeather forecast for tomorrow. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I was planning on going hunting public land that we had scouted and saw some sign on because we didn't have any activity here in eight hours come by us. Um, 
but they're talking about rain tomorrow. It's supposed to rain around 9 to 10 and again early afternoon for a couple hours. But they're talking thunderstorms. So tomorrow is probably my trip up to Walmart to buy my supplies. As I headed out for my supply run, the rain was starting as the thunderstorm front was moving in. And on my way home in the rain, I finally see a live turkey. <laughs> Look at this. Turkey right here coming across the road. It's a hen. We're just going out in the field to feed. First turkey I've seen for hunting season. Today's going to be a day we're working on YouTube videos. Good morning. It's uh, Friday, April 26th. Wednesday was a bust. Eight hours out here and the only thing moving in the woods was me. So uh, we're doing public hunting today. The plan is to at least hunt till noon out there and then uh, make a decision. If we hear birds or we have some action, maybe we'll just stay put. The ideal thing would be to bust a bird this morning right away and get back home. <laughs> That's the goal anyways. We'll see you out there. As I head out, I'm still thinking about the intel discrepancy between the most recent info and the lack of trail camera pictures at my turkey blind on Craigsland. The only thing that makes any sense is a faulty camera. I'll have to run a diagnostic check on those cameras. But that's later. Right now I've got to get my head in the game for today's hunt. At least the weather is on my side today. No rain in the forecast. We've arrived. All right, it's five o'clock in the morning and we're about to head out to public hunting. Hunting starts at 5.30, day three of my first week, but week two of the 2019 spring turkey. Well, it's 5.20. I'm settled in, in my blind. anything on the roost yet so we're gonna do a hoot owl call and see if we get a gobbler to respond <coughs> anyways looks like we're in for a little longer wait nothing on the roost around here a couple of weeks ago there were tracks all over the place. We just settle in and wait. Sun's about to crest. Starting to get light in the east. So what we're going to do now is simulate a fly down and some putts and purrs. Sit back and wait for about half hour, 45 minutes and see if anything shows. See what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So, for protection on public ground, I'm just over the crest of this hill, so anybody 
the shot would happen to be fired from behind me. I'm down behind this ridge, protected from behind. Always got to be safe when you're on public land. I've got two routes of travel here. One to the right, and then this stand of pines here. Like I said, we've had tracks. Two weeks ago, they were all over here. We got some goblin north of us. Heard a couple of faint gobbles. I heard it again. We can give us some yelps. He responded to us. Our first contact with a gobbler. I don't know if you even picked that gobbler up. He's out of ways. One, there he responded. One more raspy yelp, we're going to shut up and let him come in. <coughs> Alright, it's quarter to seven. And I'm just going to go silent for about 45 minutes till 7.30. The gobblers aren't gobbling as much as they were. I think there's some hens out there, but they know there's one or two hens over here. I use some putts and purrs and some yelps. Let's see if they don't move in this direction after a little bit and they get curious. So we just go silent for about 45 minutes here. Just heard a gobble. We've been quiet for about 10, 15 minutes, and uh, we just heard a gobble. I'll leave the camera on a little bit, see if we can pick up another one. They're coming this way. Sounds like he's in this direction.
Whew, we got our bird. I was waiting forever for them to open up. Man, they were right on top of each other and I couldn't get a shot. Then, oh, something spooked one of them. They started moving off, moving a little quicker. This bird ended up being alone, ended up taking them. Wow. Seven o'clock. Well, what I would consider almost a picture-perfect classic hunt. We made contact with the gobblers around, uh, I don't know, six o'clock, quarter after six, we heard them gobbling. And they were quite a ways out. I thought there was only one or two. Turned out to be three of them with a hen that came in. And then as they came out here and gobbled, something spooked them. I, I don't think I was moving. Maybe something with the sun shining on me, some glint or something. But all of a sudden, one didn't like it. The hen turned around. The other two started moving off faster. This guy was the slowest one. And as he turned, I figured, this is it. I got to take the shot now. So uh, I'm happy. We got our bird for this week. We hunt again next week. Let's go check them out. Nice sharp hooks. Look at the point on that thing. And they appear to be about, about an inch long. We'll measure them when we get back. The beard looks like it's been busted off a little bit. You can see up here. You can see up in here pieces are broken off. But uh, we'll measure the longest strands. It's going to be a 20 pound bird, I believe. And three times come in with a hen. And uh, this guy was the slowest one. The hen started moving off. She didn't like something. The other two times started moving. He was the last one, so I ended up taking him. Success! See you back at Craig's trailer. Now let's check out the vitals and get this thing scored. First, let's check the weight. We've got, I was close, 20 and a half, 20 and three quarters, just under 21. Between, between 20 and a half and 21. So 20 and a half, 20 and three quarters. All right, let's check spur length. That one's an inch and a sixteenth. And that one measures in at an inch and sixteenth also. So, both spurs in at one and a sixteenth inch length. Let's check out that beard. That beard's a little scraggly, it's kind of broken off, but we still take the longest strand for scoring. I'm guessing it's going to be about eight inches. Let's get her checked out. And you take it right from the base, which is right here. See what the longest strand comes out to be. Okay, maybe I'm going to be a little short. Let's get that down to the base. Right There's the base. And we're going to be in at Longest strand, seven and a half. So, um, seven and a half inch beard on the longest strand. Inch and a sixteenth spurs, both of them. 
and 20 and 3 quarter pounds. So we'll get that scored out. Um, a score of 60 is considered a trophy bird. I don't know that we're going to make 60. I'm pretty sure we're going to make the high 50s though. So I'm on my way home here Friday late afternoon. We'll turn around Monday morning and head back up for week two of my turkey hunt. We'll see you then. Hi. Well, thanks for tuning in and watching my first spring 2019 turkey hunt here in central Wisconsin. That harvested bird, by the way, scored out based on NWTF standards at 57.075, which is just under the 60 threshold score by the NWTF signifying a true trophy harvest. Anyways, that's the end of this episode. If you like the episode, please go ahead and click on the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, well, why not go ahead and subscribe? This way you won't miss any new upcoming episodes in our series. You won't have to wait for me to notify you via email or Facebook or whatever, or worry about me not contacting you and having to check all the time. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. And if you have any friends that you think may enjoy these videos, please go ahead and share it with them. And please join us next week, Saturday, for another episode in our 2019 spring turkey hunt here in central Wisconsin. I promise you this hunt is going to show you a once in a lifetime double opportunity and harvesting a Wisconsin gobbler. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget, subscribe, like, and share. We'll see you on the next video.